Hello, Nelson here. So in this session, I want to talk about the seven spirits of God. So the seven spirits of God is a topic that is has really grown in popularity uh, in the last few years. Um, so who are the seven spirits of God? I've heard some people say that they are just seven manifestations of Holy Spirit or some groups that believe that they're individual people or individual spirits separate from Holy Spirit. So I'm going to talk about all of that, who they are, what they do, uh, how to engage with them, so on and so forth. So starting out with the easy part, um, who are the seven? So the seven spirits of God um, are our tutors as it relates to the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. Um, Ian Clayton actually said this so well in his book, I don't know another way to describe their relationship to us. So I'll always credit him in coming up with the verbiage for this. Um, but um, when a king wanted to have a son and didn't have one of his own, he would adopt one. And they would take the kid into the courtroom and they would have two guys before the king. They'd have two guys in there who held a uh, parchment. Um, each one would have a parchment. One guy would be holding a blank page. The other guy would be holding uh, the record of that kid's life up until that point. Um, it would have on it the kid's name, who his parents were, um, and everything he'd done up until that point. All of that would be on that document. Uh, if he did anything good, anything bad, so on and so forth, didn't matter. It was all on that record. Or the guy holding the blank sheet. And the king would either read it or have someone read it to him. And after it had been read, the king would then uh, look at the guy who had the blank page and pretty much begin to prophesy the will that he had for his son. Um, saying what his new name was, what are some of his inheritances, what are his rights, what are his responsibilities, what are the inheritances he's been that he's been given, uh, all of that. And that would be written on that blank sheet uh, on that blank sheet. And after the king had pretty much finished giving that child his destiny, um, seven teachers would come out. I like to call them seven rabbis, but they'd come out and they'd sign at the bottom, agreeing to train that child, train that son in what his father had laid out before him. And after they had signed, the old record of that child's life would be uh, wiped clean. The old parchment would be wiped clean with a rag, meaning that the only record of that child's life is that new record that the king just made. So the seven spirits, ah, my bet, before we go there. So those rabbis, those teachers would then begin to train that son until he had mastered everything that they could teach him. And then that son would then be uh, mentored by the king directly, but not until he graduated. So that's our relationship with the seven spirits. They are the seven teachers hired by God to teach us. Um, so the seven spirits of God are not God. They are seven spirits that are hired by God. They work for God. They work directly under Holy Spirit. Um, I like to see it as Holy Spirit is the principal of the school and they are the teachers of the school. Um, I also like to say that Holy Spirit is kind of like mom that helps us with our homework. Um, but that's the relationship we have with the seven spirits and that they are divinely assigned to teach us. And the majority of our growth and development in sonship will come from us going to the school of the divine that is taught by the seven spirits. Now, the royal family will have relationship with us, but for the most part, they won't teach us because it's not their job. They've hired these seven tutors to teach us. But going to class is our responsibility. Um, the seven spirits are seven individual spirits. They are not emanations of Holy Spirit or forms of Holy Spirit or blessings that come from Holy Spirit. They're their own people. Uh, they work very closely even in the picture that they have within Revelation is that they are the seven candlesticks that are placed before the throne. So before you get to the throne, you must go through the fire. You must go through the school of the seven. 
Um, so let's talk. Who are the seven spirits? So Isaiah 11 and 2 actually list them in order. Um, in order, they are the spirit of the Lord. Uh, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. Uh, counsel, might, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. My bad. Mm -hmm. um, but they're listed in order, Isaiah 11 and 2. Um, and they all teach different things. They're paired differently. The spirit of the Lord is the only one that works by himself all the time. The other uh, six are paired with each other. Um, so wisdom and understanding work together. Counsel and might work together. Knowledge and the fear of the Lord work together. Um, and I do talk about them thoroughly in my book, uh, Fullness, Guide to Sonship and Mysticism. Um, so I'll read to you pretty much a short summary that I have for each of them. So the spirit of the Lord is uh, is the spirit that teaches us to function in authority, dominion, manifest freedom, victory, and the omnipresence of God. This is the spirit of lordship, stewardship, and the spirit of the emperor. Uh, so a great example of someone who walked in the dimension of the spirit of the Lord is Samson. Um, Samson is a great example <laughs> of walking in that dimension. Um, if you look closely, it never says that Holy Spirit came upon him. It always says the spirit of the Lord. The spirit of the Lord is someone very different from Holy Spirit. Spirit of the Lord does all the fighting. <laughs> uh, it's a strong spirit. It's the spirit of victory, as I just said, um, which is what Samson was characterized as. He couldn't lose. <laughs> While the spirit of the Lord was on him, he couldn't lose. No matter how many enemies came against him, he wasn't able to lose. But also something we say all the time that's made its way into a lot of gospel music is that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Um, if you pay close attention to the story of Samson, he was actually bound uh, right before he got up and beat up the Philistines. <laughs> but it says that the moment that the spirit of the Lord came upon him, uh, his bond snapped and he was set free because where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So he literally couldn't be bound uh, while he, while the spirit of the Lord was upon him. It causes everything to be free. It causes what it's uh, connected to, to be victorious uh, in whatever endeavor. He just happened to be using it for war and battle. Um, even translation in the spirit, uh, is a manifestation of the spirit of the Lord as it teaches us to move in the omnipresence of God. Um, it even says that Samson would be stirred in the spirit and move between camps. Uh, those camps were miles away from each other. Uh, and he would shift over and then shift back and shift over. Uh, it's a little less known fact about Samson. Um, so then we get to the spirit of wisdom uh, spirit of wisdom um, is the spirit of clarity, because that's actually what wisdom means. Um, yeah, wisdom is the spirit of clarity. It represents being able to see something clearly, to uh, have a clear perspective or to have an elevated perspective, to be able to see the clear picture to its fullest. Um and there are tons of man manifestations and revelations that go with this. But wisdom, she's the spirit of clarity that helps us see in different dimensions and teaches us to see from an elevated heavenly perspective. Coupled with the spirit of understanding, um, she is a spirit that teaches us to decipher mysteries and break down information. She helps us gain full comprehension and they work together. So one shows you something in its clearest form. The other helps you understand it or comprehend it. Um, someone who worked well in this dimension is Solomon. Uh, Solomon was said to be the wisest, but wisdom doesn't mean you know what to do or that you do everything right. Wisdom just means that you can see clearly. Um, Growing up in church, we had this song where we'd say the Lord, he's got the whole world in his hands to show God's omni, uh, omniscient eye, 
<laughs> in a sense, that he was watching everything happen from a sovereign perspective. This is that perspective that the spirits of wisdom and understanding help us to function from. Um, and this is the dimension that Solomon functioned in. He, uh, I believe that he was actually given the ability to see everything that was happening within his kingdom or here and be aware of anything happening related to his kingdom. Um, because if you notice, he was uh, what he asked for was clarity to rule his kingdom. So enough wisdom, enough sight, enough perspective, enough of a heavenly divine perspective to be able to rule. So I believe the same way is depicted that uh, God has the whole world in his hand. I believe Solomon held his kingdom in the same manner. So the question I usually hear is, um, if Solomon was so wise, why did he make the mistakes that he made? It doesn't sound very wise to me. And the answer that I usually just say, that's because you don't know what the word wise means. Uh, wise just means clear. So he saw everything he needed to do. He was the greatest seer in history because wise just means clear. No one could outsee Solomon. Now, wisdom and understanding helped him see and it helped him comprehend, but it didn't make decisions for him because decision making and planning comes from the next spirit, which is the spirit of counsel, who often gets all of her prayers robbed by people who are uh, mixing wisdom and counsel together. Counsel is what to do. That's divine strategy and planning. Uh, she is the spirit that gives us guidance and strategy. <laughs> um that's where we get the, what do I do? What should I do? This is where we get our advice from, our divine advice. This is where we grow in judgment as far as what decisions to make. We grow in that from functioning with counsel, who's the great advice giver. And she's coupled uh, with the spirit of might. Now, he's the spirit of uh, power, obviously. Um, he's the spirit that teaches us to access the omnipotence of God to demonstrate power. Now, those two work together. So you kind of have this divine strategist working with uh, the spirit of power. So it's kind of like the one that does all the strategizing and then the one that goes out to actually do battle. Um, and actually in meeting the spirit of might, he most people would get the picture of like the Incredible Hulk, but he's actually quite calm and meek. Uh, those are characteristics of might, literally. He's very quiet, soft spoken. He doesn't really talk much. Uh, I'll get to my own encounters with them in a little bit, but um, uh, it usually functions from, uh, especially when they're training you, you usually see counsel give you an instruction, and then once you follow that instruction, no matter how bizarre it is, might usually comes with the payoff. Uh, someone who demonstrates this dimension well is Moses. Um Moses would get a, a, an instruction from the divine. And then once he followed that instruction, he'd see a major payoff. Um, it was even said. Now, I got this revelation before I read this, but in Legends of the Jews, um, it's even said that Moses had the spirit of counsel and the spirit of might, uh, which was great confirmation for me. Um during the time where he ruled as a king in the land of Cush, it said that he was as strong as a lion and that people came to him for counsel, which is demonstration of counsel and might uh, embodied physically. So then we get to the spirit of knowledge and the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Now, the spirit of knowledge, he's, a bi he's like a biology teacher. He shows us who and what God is so that we know who and what we are. Uh, he teaches us to access the omniscience of God and the records of heaven. Uh, he's one of my favorites, if I'm being honest, uh, because that tends to, well, before I get into that, let me finish reading the excerpt I wrote for the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So he's the spirit that teaches us to manifest the awe of God, uh, glory, and to walk in the ways of God. Uh, so someone who functioned in that dimension was Daniel. Daniel was someone uh, who, uh, no matter what literature you read, you can't actually see him doing anything unrighteous. 
which breaks the theology that everyone has to be evil and corrupt and something has to be wrong with you because uh, there isn't a single story, biblical nor extra biblical, that depicts uh, Daniel doing anything unrighteous. Uh, and that's because he walked with the fear of the Lord, not the I'm afraid of you, God, but the awe of God, the ways of God. Um, and not just that. Um, one of the principles that I mentioned concerning the spirit of knowledge is that you understand who and what God is so that you understand who and what you are. That's a transfiguration principle that changes us in the likeness of God because uh, you become who you spend time with. And all we know about Daniel is that all he did was go to work and then go home and spend time in the face of God. Um, and. Uh, a lot of people didn't know this, but Daniel's actually the fourth man who entered the fire to save the other three Hebrew boys. Uh, it was Daniel who came in the fire in the uh, form like the son of man to rescue Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, that is a transfiguration principle of you become who you spend time with. Um, that's a principle that we should often weaponize to change ourselves. The best way to see deliverance in yourself is to change who you fellowship with, uh, not just on a carnal level. But if you start communing with the divine, you start to become more divine. You start spending more time with father. You start acting like father. You start spending more time with mom. You start acting like her. Uh, you spend a lot more time with Yeshua. You'll start to pick up on his mannerisms and you'll start to act like him. Uh, so that's just a simple overview uh, of the seven. So I guess I could talk about uh, some of my encounters with them. So uh, it was December 2019. Um, that's when I first decided I was going to go meet with the seven spirits of God. So it was one of the last weeks. I want to say it started in like December 8th. And I decided I was going to spend time with them for a day. So I gave the spirit of the Lord one day. I gave wisdom and understanding two days, counsel and might two days, knowledge and the fear of the Lord two days. And I would go in the spirit realm and meet with them and just allow them to introduce themselves to me. And uh, I remember might well, I remember the spirit of the Lord. First time I met him, he was wearing armor. He looked like an ancient soldier. And he was popping in and out of dimensions, swooping and swirling and flying back and forth and swinging. Remember, he had a sword in one hand and he had some uh, red ribbons around his other hand that he was kind of using to swing like Spider-Man around. Uh, and he was he was demonstrating a lot of the gifts and manifestations that come from working with him specifically. Um, and that's another thing. Um, Holy Spirit gives us, let's just say, nine gifts, um, but that's specifically from Holy Spirit. Um, each of these spirits are their own, and they come with their own unique gifts and manifestations as well. That's why I mentioned some of the manifestations of the Spirit of the Lord are traveling in the Spirit, translation by faith, uh, physical amps like uh experiencing supernatural strength, speed, and agility, kind of like how we saw Elijah, who was known to teleport all around and even outran the chariot that Ahab was on. Uh, that's manifestations of the spirit of the Lord. Um, we even see, uh, let's just say, yeah, so that's some manifestations of the spirit of the Lord, like uh, David and the mighty men. Those were all graced with the power of the spirit of the Lord to win in battle. They got abandoned on the battlefield. One of the soldiers got abandoned on the battlefield and didn't lose. He came back with an attitude, but that he couldn't actually be beat <laughs> uh, because the spirit of the Lord assures victory. Um, you get wisdom. Some of wisdom's manifestations are uh, contentment, joy, childlikeness, uh, wealth. She teaches you how to make money, <laughs> uh, how to see in the spirit, how to uh, discern. 
uh, spirit of understanding helps with academics, comprehension in any field, uh, languages of all sorts. Uh, understanding will help you interpret dreams, interpret visions, understand earthly language, astral languages, spiritual languages, uh, meta all metaphysical languages, including infused knowledge or cardiognosis. Those are manifestations of the spirit of understanding. It's understanding and comprehension to the fullest. Um, so then you get to the spirit of counsel. Very simply, you know what to do. You know how to help people. You know what they should be doing. It gives you a divine plan. Spirit of might uh, teaches you to function in omnipotence. So it, he really stretches your faith on you can do literally anything. And he, push, he pushes you on that. Um, he even teaches you to function with energy, like not just like metaphysical energy, but energy in every sense of the word, uh, creation and destruction, life and death. He'll teach you how to raise the dead. He'll teach you how to use your own authority for demonstration and practical practices. Um, spirit of knowledge, knowledge. He's kind of like Google where you can ask him a question and you'll get the real truth out of him. Uh, a lot of times when people first engage with the spirit of knowledge, uh, the first thing he'll ask them is, what do you want to know? <laughs> Almost like a dare. Uh, and that's been a reoccurring threat when uh, a reoccurring uh, encounter that I've heard people have whenever I've introduced them to the spirit of knowledge, that the first thing they'd hear him say is what you want to know. <laughs> um, but he tends to be see he was one of my favorites also like i said he spirit of knowledge i kind of have a affinity for uh first time me and him uh met each other was during that same time period in december um i remember us uh he took me on a field trip he's kind of like miss frizzle from the magic school bus where there's always a field trip and we were moving through the cosmos moving through outer space uh and that was my first time seeing aliens. <laughs> and I was like, what are they doing? He's like, they're managing outer space because the sons of God won't. Um, which is where I learned that everywhere a principality is, for the most part, is a place that a son is supposed to be and they're not taking their post. That one's for free. <laughs> um, but during that same encounter, the spirit of knowledge stabbed me in the stomach. He had this little knife that he's carrying with him that kind of was like a mirror on the blade. Um, but it wasn't like attack. It was an impartation I received in that moment from him directly because I had, neglect I had neglected my knowing for a while, my divine knowing. And during that impartation, I got it back and I've been using it. Uh, ever since <laughs> but that's something i got from him i've been fun uh, it's from then i started functioning higher degrees of infused knowledge um the spirit of the fear of the lord a lot of people see him as a cloud when i first met him i was in uh high school i was in school and uh i actually saw him before well no i saw him as a um he was kind of like an old man with purple skin and he had this cloak on and his eyes were kind of like portals that were always fixated on the throne room where his eyes were always elsewhere. Uh, and he really embodied the being in awe of God in human form. Uh, so those are a few of my encounters with them. Um, so I guess to answer the question of how to do, how do I begin to engage with the seven spirits? So um, there's a few different ways. Uh, very easily, however you've learned to hear God, like audibly by sitting and listening, asking questions and forming a relationship, that's the same way that you can begin to develop a relationship with the seven spirits. Just uh, be intentional, uh, spend time listening, more time uh, listening than talking. Um, Outside of that, you can visit them in the uh, in the inner court of the temple that you are. You can meet with them in the throne room uh, in heaven because they're in both places. And 
each of them actually have their own dimension. I call uh, the spirit of the Lord's dimension, the red room, which blew my mind when I finally saw the Black Widow movie years and years later, years and years later, because a lot of the things in that movie were directly related to the spirit of the Lord, uh, how they were uh, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it, but how they were uh, going to set people free, uh, rescuing people from uh, trafficking and uh, slavery and how there was a fragrance that the bad guy was giving off that protected him. That's that fragrance of dominion that makes us immune. Um, all of the combat that was going on, the physical enhancements that some of them who were experimented on were experiencing. Um, the fact that it was called the Red Room. <laughs> It was kind of like an indirect, maybe even unintentional tribute to the spirit of the Lord. But granted, uh, Marvel movies tend to be more prophetic than a lot of prophetic people these days. But uh, I won't be a bully. <laughs> but you can meet with them. <laughs> In short, you can meet with them. You can invite them over. Uh, the seven spirits are your teachers. They have a classroom in the inner court of the temple that you are, which is the same dimension as the soul. Uh, the same place. Holy Spirit has a library in the astral dimension that they're also at all the time. So you have a few options to meet with them. Um, I consider all of them easy, but for some people who don't know how to travel in the spirit, I'd say just start talking to them. Talk and listen. Um, but that's all for this one. Um, leave some questions and some comments for me, but that's it. Y'all be blessed.